Oh, good. He's not sad anymore. That makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> but do you see what I mean? Like, the first chapter is crazy long. Like, I played for what? Three and a half hours? Four hours? More or less? To get through chapter one? Like, like I know it's because it's doing, like, all the inter introductions and stuff, but, like... It's crazy. It's so crazy. And I'm gonna save real quick, like... <laughs> now, say Romeo. John held a small chunk of a cracker before the new Jacques, who twitched his head from side to side. Romeo, come on now, I can do- I know you can do it. Romeo. New Jacques blinked at John. John dragged his hand through his hair. He'd been at this for the last three hours, all just trying to teach Jacques the word Romeo. It apparently took him the first two hours to get Jacques to hold still on command, and now John was stuck on the very first word Juliet should know in the play. At this rate, I doubted his plan was really going to work. If Jacques couldn't learn the word Romeo, how is he going to learn wherefore, or forsooth, or bane? Don't worry, the first word... Stop doing that. It's always the hardest. After that, it gets easier. Way easier. I nodded silently. Romeo. Say the word Romeo. Say Romeo for God's sake! I rested a hand on his arm and he glanced at me. You're right, sorry. He swallowed, setting down the small cracker. You think you could take over? I need to... I need a break. Yeah. Sure, of course. John collapsed onto his bed, a hand over his eye. I bit my lip. He was so stressed out, and if he was wasting all this time on Jacques, he wouldn't be able to practice. I turned to the new Jacques. Mm. Sure is a shame that this Jacques isn't human. You know, I bet a human Juliet would be able to do this easily. What a weird thought, right? I looked over meaningfully at John, but he was barely listening. I heard the costumist made a Juliet costume too. She liked the design and wanted a life-size version for herself. I bet it's really pretty. It's a shame no one will be able to see it under the stage lights. John scoffed. What a waste of her time. Um, so what made you want to have Jacques play Juliet in the first place? John rubbed his face, exhaling deeply. He was mus mushing his cheek into little puffs like a chipmunk. Jacques had, has star quality, unlike anything I'd ever seen. You saw him and you instantly loved him. He had an effect on people unlike any other. That it factor, you know? He was practically begging to go into show business. And if we could just make it happen, imagine where it'd take us. A grin spread across his face. I nodded slowly. And this Jacques is the same? Well. There's only one Jacques I know now, so he better be. There was a note of finality in his voice. So I turned back to the bird in question. Romeo. Romeo, where far art thou, Romeo? Nothing. The play was only two weeks away. Would Jacques really be ready in time? If he wasn't, the play would be a total disaster. I looked at John again, my conversation from my, with Mai from just a few days before, bouncing around in my mind. If he got a human Juliet, almost all of his troubles would be fixed. He wouldn't have to worry about spending time teaching her lines because she could do it on her own. And then instead of worrying, he could study. Mai said to look for opportunities, right? Well, here was one. I took a deep breath. John, I really think you should consider a human Juliet. Maybe you and Jacques, the old Jacques, would have been able to pull it off, but not this one. John sat up and blinked at me. I expected immediate refusal, but instead cogs were turning in his mind. Maybe. Maybe you have a point. A pained expression crossed his face, and I wasn't sure whether it was because he missed the old Jacques, he was mourning the opportunity lost, or he was trying to imagine the play in a different way than he had the entire year. Probably all three. But you know, what if we tried a new technique? Yeah, we'll let him outside if he gets a word right. That'll definitely be enough incentive, right? He beamed at me and I was too glad to finally see him smiling again to turn him down. Besides, once John decided on something, that was how he was doing it. And with a sigh, I turned back to Jacques. Romeo. Say the word Romeo. Hey. You know, you gotten a lot better with birds. I bet things would get worse. I thought things would get worse after Jacques destroyed Mr. Bunny. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what they say. Practice makes perfect. It was kind of hard to be afraid of something when you were furious with it. It was the middle of the week, and class just ended. John, as often as he did nowadays, went rushing out the door as soon as the bell rang. I put my books in my bag, intending to follow up to help with today's Jock training session when PBG stopped me. Hey. Hana, can I talk to you for a second? I'm in a little bit of a rush, can it wait? I moved to step past him, but PBG threw out an arm to stop me. I don't think I can, but let's not talk here. 
PBG and I headed out onto the campus, away from the flood of students and their listening ears. His face was grim, his hands firmly in his pockets. With each step we took, my anxiety increased. What was so wrong that PBG had to talk to me about it? It wasn't until we got to the soccer field, nearly empty considering it was just after class, that PBG finally told me what was on his mind. Is John okay? What? What makes you ask something like that? He gave me a look, one that said, I'm not stupid, that's what. I know John's been struggling since Jacques left, but now there's a new Jacques? It's blatantly obvious it's not the real Jacques, but John keeps trying to convince me that it is, even though he knows I know otherwise. I didn't want to say anything about it since John was so adamant, but it's really weirding me out. His grades are falling, he's hardly sleeping anymore. And on top of that, he's not showing up to meetings or paying any attention to club business. He's one of the founders, he can't just leave everything to us. We're a team. We all need to work together. And now he's dragged you into it too. What do you mean, dragged me into it? I want to help him. Besides, I'm perfectly fine. No. I've seen you rushing off after every class, following him to our room. Then you stay until I show up after soccer practice and you rush right on out without so much as a hello. What's going on? Have you even had time to sleep? Study? Go to dinner? You don't go to dinner with John, do you? You guys aren't dating, are you? I grabbed his arm on impulse, gently rubbing them to prevent the boy from an imminent heart attack. Hey. PBG, calm down, please. Calm down. I know things look really bad right now, but... But what? But would they get better? There wasn't a chance in hell that would happen, not with John being completely unwilling to take suggestions. But we'd win the tournament? Those odds looked bleak too. I hadn't had time to practice since getting wrapped up with the new Jacques. I was just kind of hoping that my prior practice and Shane's advice, strategy as always, would pan out for me. Then what? What could I really say? PBG seemed to be thinking the same thing. He took a hand out of his pocket and rested it on my arm. We formed a weird kind of circle, both trying to comfort each other. He shouldn't be allowed to drag you into this too. It's one thing to risk his own well-being, but... PBG seemed sincerely distressed about what possible harm I was coming to. The thought was both charming and slightly ludicrous. In spite of myself, I started giggling. Uh... What? Why? Why are you laughing at me? It's nothing, it's just... You're so thoughtful, PBG. What? I wiped tears from my eyes, struggling to calm down. PBG. You're always looking out for me. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> uh, no, it's really nothing. You're right that it's making things a little bit tougher on me, but that's okay. I volunteered for this. Look at PBG! Ah, oh, So cute. Things are bad, but I just can't abandon John. Not when he clearly needs me most. But I can't be there all the time. Can you try and make sure he's eating and sleeping? There's no way we'll be able to get everything done, and it's not looking like things will go well. He's only going to get more and more worked up. At the very least, we can prevent some of the damage that'll cause by making sure he's a little bit healthier than he would be if we left him on his own. PBG pouted, seemed somewhat annoyed. I felt bad getting him involved too, but I knew I could count on him when I needed help. There's no stopping John if he doesn't want to, but I can try. PBG glanced away for a second, running a hand through his hair. So, you like him then? What? what? No, of course I don't. There was that look again. The, I'm not stupid. <laughs> Maybe a little. Wow. That's fine. Yeah. Maybe you'll be good for him. <sighs> oh, <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Oh, oh my god. He's high. Oh, I can't even read this now. And then, oh my god. Guys, PBG hurts. I don't know why he does this to you. Whenever you play the game, he hurts you. Ugh. Why you gotta do this, peeps? He sighed heavily. It wasn't all the joyous teasing response I expected from him. Do you not think we'd make a good couple? I know it seems unlikely. No, it's just the opposite. You guys would make each other happy. I can really see it working out in the long term. Uh... Then why are you... Anyways, I don't want to keep you. We have practice today anyways. I better not see you in his room when I get back. Go home early today and get some work done. Look after yourself. See you later. I will. Thanks, PBG. Aww. <laughs> smile faded. <laughs> I rushed off the field hoping I didn't miss anything important during today's teaching session. There were only two days left until the first performance. Surely there was something we could do. 
Soon it was the day before the play, and the new Jacques was nowhere even close to ready. We only just managed to get him to keep his Juliet costume on without throwing off the hat every five seconds. There was absolutely no way we were going to be able to teach him how to act and make Shakespeare intelligible to an uninformed audience. John paced nervously before me, biting his fist. Bags lined his eyes, his face was pale, and every time I came over, his room was another degree messier than I thought humanly possible. From hanging around him for the past few days, it was clear he was completely consumed by thoughts of the play. I tried to distract him by taking care of other things, telling stories, making jokes, but it was no use. John had a one-track mind. Even when I managed to engage him in something else for a second, he immediately likened it to the play afterwards. Hey. Think we'll be able to get Jacques to do something like that? I never had been I had never been so near a human putting themselves under so much stress, and I had no idea what to do. At this point, I was worried about more than just the play in the tournament. I was seriously concerned about his health. If he was like this now, how would he be in five years in the future, when his job or family's future was on the line? If he kept going like this, something had to give. I didn't want to have to watch that happen. I jumped. John stopped pacing and was now facing me, a look of utter defeat on his face. I really don't know what to do. I don't think... I don't think this Jacques is going to work out. Really? What? Really? You finally realized it. Up until now, he'd been adamant that it would just require a little more time. It's just I'm... I'm so frustrated. Absolutely everything else is going perfectly. The sets are done, the extras are doing amazing, all the other actors and actresses are kicking ass, the costuming's out of this world for a school production, the lighting, the sound, the design, the props, everything is set for it to be perfect play, except for this, and I... I don't know what to do. He collapsed into a seat on the couch, and I wrapped an arm around him. This isn't even counting the tournament. I've been trying to practice every night, but half the time I fall asleep when I start. And then PPG comes home, and we have to do our assignments, and I stay up late doing those. I must be missing something. There must be some way to make this work. It'll be okay. Don't worry. It'll all work out. I mean, you're giving it everything you've got, aren't you? This ha That has to mean it'll work. It has to. I rubbed his back, staring straight ahead. Truth be told, I didn't think it was going to work out. The writing was on the wall. But I could see where he was coming from. Even now, I held a small sliver of hope that maybe, just maybe, a miracle would somehow occur. It seems stupid to suggest the grandiosity of a miracle for something as silly as a school play, but still. Maybe that miracle consisted of a simple choice. Are you sure you don't want to switch to a human, Juliet? John flinched and shrugged my arm off his shoulder. Of course not! I had a vision for this play, Hana. A vision! Besides, do you think switching now would do anything? She'd need her costume adjusted, the line memorized, we'd have to redo and relearn the, lo the blocking for everyone, and find newly sized props, and uh, it should be sufficiently talented. Huh. It won't work. I clenched my hands together in my lap, running my thumbs over each other. Sure, it'd be a lot of work, but I felt like John was just determined to be as miserable as possible. If he wasn't so set in his ways, if he actually listened to other people's advice or suggestions, this wouldn't have happened. He honestly brought all of this on himself, and he couldn't see that. It was Jacques' fault, or the world was a mean place. It had nothing to do with him being what amounted to, honestly speaking, a bad leader. But I gritted my teeth. What would telling him do now? He'd just get even more angry, no doubt. If he wouldn't listen, he wouldn't listen. It's just... John's voice caught in his throat, and he took a few deep breaths before starting over. A small pang of guilt hit me, but I shook it off, my head swimming. It's just that it's not just me counting on this to work. There are so many people who put their, na their time and effort, their passion. So many people who work so hard, give up sleep, hurt themselves, worried about this play. And now, because I couldn't teach this damn bird, it's all going to pieces. He put his face in his hands. I feel like George Lucas after realized that Phantom Menace was actually a piece of shit. He rubbed- <laughs> I rubbed his back, nodding. There was nothing else I could really say. The truth of the situation was that John messed up, and nothing I said or did would cushion the blow. John was in charge of the entire play. If something went wrong, he was by virtue of that position to be at least partially at fault, for he made the decision to do that thing or trust that person somewhere down the line. It won't be as bad as you're imagining, I'm sure. That, at least, wasn't was something I could truthfully say. John shook his head again, then wrapped his arms around me and buried his face in my shoulder. I stroked his hair, and we sat like that in silence. It was all we could do. Finally, Romeo and Juliet's opening day arrived. I made it to the theater an hour earlier than the call time, partially because of nerves and partially because I knew my costume was going to be an absolute bitch to put on. Slowly, the other cast members began to show up. Warm-ups were performed, makeup was put on, stretches were stretched. Actors were an interesting bunch. 
Some of them were completely insufferable, the kind of people who tried to take attention from others because they definitely, definitely were making up for something else. Some were also shallow people who collected numbers and treated everybody like a best friend they hadn't seen in years, screaming out names and pulling them into bear hugs, only to talk shit about them minutes later. But some of them were the most unique, quirky, clever people you could ever meet. Some were humble, some were even adverse to, sit to attention until they were actually on stage. One in particular I hadn't heard speak out of yes, no, and his lines. There were those who liked the poetry of the words, those who loved plowing the psychological depths of a given character, and those who treated scripts as treasure hunter puzzles, reading them over and over for the single line that would allow them to completely reinterpret the character's motivation. All in all, I liked the atmosphere, and this surprised me. I was a quiet person, a bookworm, a nerd. I didn't really like having people's attention, and being surrounded by too many strangers made me nervous, especially when I couldn't trust them. But here, people were energetic, people were funny and bright. More accurately, people were all over the place. It seemed like almost anything could happen, and despite the potential for mockery, no one treated me like a weirdo. They just accepted my quirks as they were. I understood why John wanted to make the play success, and how keenly he felt everyone's passion and hard work. I almost wished I could keep doing it. Almost. Oh, look at him! <laughs> That only made it all the harder when John finally showed up looking like the actual reincarnation of the Grim Reaper, Grim Reaper, new Jacques in tow. Hana. Hana, you... You look great. I stared at myself in a mirror. Yes, great. Exactly how I would have put it. Truly, tree is my most natural state. John. <laughs> Thanks, John. Really. I'm honored to have the chance to play the part of tree. Even though it was awkward to have swords flying in front of my face and people making out at my feet, how do you think things are going to go? Are you feeling okay? John cleared his throat and smiled. Of course, things are going to go perfectly, all according to plan. I just know it. John did not know it. The play opened to a polite smattering of applause. The first bunch of students rolled out on stage, gathering into an actual chorus line before delivering the prologue of the play. Two households, both aligned in dignity, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. The scene switched, this time to a public area. I shuffled out in my tree garb, perching right in the middle of the stage. Muffled laughter came from the audience. My hair was still quite visible despite my being a tree, before the actors started in on their lines. Laughter quickly faded as an all-out brawl settled onto stage. John's knowledge of stage fighting came out in full force. The audience gasped and cooed as the actors slugged it out. To the audience, it must have seemed like particularly good acting, but I knew these actors sincerely hated each other. A few times I caught them actually trying to hurt each other. So far, so good. It wasn't long before Romeo himself came on the scene, decrying his unrequited love for one unseen Rosaline. I narrowed my eyes. Romeo and Juliet was supposed to be a play about true love or something, but I didn't really see it. But the audience seemed to enjoy it. As long as things kept going like this, everything would be fine. But we weren't even able to teach Jacques Juliet's lines. I held my breath as the scene ended and I shuffled off stage. In no time, it was Juliet's first scene. God forbid, where's this girl? What? Juliet? Jacques twitched out on stage, glancing between the two, and just stood there, in silence. Oh no. Out of nowhere, a voice bellowed across the speakers. How now? Who calls? John? Was John going to read Juliet's lines? Y your mother. Madam, I'm here. What is your will? The audience seemed a bit perplexed, but either way, they went along with it. A bird on stage was a novel sight, after all, and they seemed intrigued to be getting something they weren't expecting. But still, John wouldn't be able to pull this off for long. Eventually, Romeo would need to speak to Juliet, and when that happened... My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. John approached Jacques. Juliet was supposed to rebuff Romeo here, at least at first. My heart pounded in my chest as John grew closer and closer. Jacques twitched his head from side to side. Please, Jacques, please tell me you learned something. And then Juliet opened her mouth. Woe, well, my love, I am dying. Lay the sword to my breast and poison to my lips. Yea, I am dead. John paused, unsure of what to do with this development. Whispers echoed throughout the theater, and I couldn't tell whether they were more from the actors or the audience. H have not St. Lips and Holy Palmers too? Dead, dead, I am dead. I am hungry. Feed me. I hid my face with my hands. I couldn't watch. The play went on like that, the actors valiantly trying to work around Jock's utter insistences of his own demise. 
By the time early intermission rolled around, the audience was audibly upset. People shifted in their seats, sighing and grunting. Women whispered cunning remarks to their husbands. The outrage, though concealed, was palpable. At this point, there wasn't even a plot. It would have been avant-garde had John and the others known how to play off her mistakes, but none of the actors knew how to improvise in Shakespeare. They plowed through the scenes as if Juliet said all the right things, and as a consequence, nothing made sense. I watched it all play out in front of me, trying as hard as I could not to cringe. Trees, after all, did not cringe. As the cast sat in a dejected huddle during the first intermission, John peeked behind the curtains, trying to gauge how the audience was taking it. People are even asking for their money back. At the rate this is going, people are going to leave before the play's even over. I'm so sorry. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? The show must go on. John gazed at me. The other cast members watched us, the room stuffy and silently. And silent. So it must. Hey, hey at least you didn't direct the room. Could have been worse. This is at least better than that. Huh. Is it? John fixed a smudge in his makeup in the mirror, probably caused by his nervous habit of rubbing his hair and face, then lined up the, before the curtain. The stage lights dimmed. Is it really? The play continued on. In a way, it was almost inspiring how the actors kept trying to give their best performance, how John bull bullheadedly continued with his vision in stark defiance of reality. The audience grew more and more restless as they saw the quality of the play wasn't improving. The more proactive of them trickled out of the theater. John grew irate. Backstage, a feeling of gloom and despair floated through the air. It was a doomed production. Everyone cared. Everyone was passionate. Everyone was giving it their all. But nothing they did would save the play. Actors quietly opened bottles of water, hardly speaking to each other. It was like seeing kids soberly line the walls of a candy store. It was just wrong. I sat with them backstage, listening to the play, when John came flying around a corner. Um. W where's Jacques? He was panting heavily, abject terror on his face. Okay. Jacques, can you not find him? Uh. He's gone. He's nowhere to be found. He... I think he flew away. John knees buckled and he collapsed onto the floor. It's too late. I can't do anything else. The play's over. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. I put a hand on his forehead, which was burning hot. He was breathing quickly, his eyes staring straight ahead, not even registering what was in front of him. He wasn't in the theater with me. He was lost in his mind. He was having a panic attack. I swallowed hard and pulled him into a sitting position. When I had a panic attack back home, Dad always helped me calm down. I pulled John's head to my chest, stroking his hair. Hey, 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 you're all right. You're safe. You're backstage in the theater at the sac- at- Oh my god, this is like really- holy shit. You're backstage in the theater at Asako. You're wearing your Romeo costume and I'm dressed as a tree. It's hot back here. The floor is rough underneath you. The people here at the play care about you and want you to be happy. Your friends love you and want you to be happy. I love you and want you to be happy. Huh? <laughs> John's breathing started to slow and he clutched my arms. Also, I am dressed as a tree. That is a thing. John let out a light chuckle, mopping sweat off his brow. He sat up, clearly still a bit shaken, but much better than before. He took my hand and smiled. Thank you, Hannah. I nodded and pulled him into a hug. I miss... I miss old Jacques. Jacques would have been able to do the play. Jacques wouldn't have let me strain myself. Jacques would have cared about my well-being, and he would have been able to calm me down, and... John took a deep, shaky breath, just as realization struck me so hard, I felt like I had been slapped in the face. John hadn't been able to grieve. Between the play, the tournament, and school, John never had time to actually feel and mourn his best friend's passing. Instead, he and I instantly found a replacement. A replacement that only cemented how much he lost in the first place. This was... partially my fault. What should I do? Uh... Oh god. I feel like... Oh my god. I feel like being sympathetic is the wrong thing to do. Uh, be real? John, listen. I swallowed. I hated being the bearer of bad news. Shock is gone. There's no getting him back. This new bird was a mistake. There's no replacing Jock, and I think you and I both know it. We were being too stubborn, trying to force something that wasn't meant to be. You... No, we. I think we both need to learn how to let things go. John didn't say anything for a long while. I stroked the back of his hair, heart pounding, hoping beyond hope I hadn't done any damage and made it worse. Snippets of the play floated through the cracks in the curtain. They were getting close to Juliet's next scene. 
Would he just have to stop the play? John pushed himself away from me. I'll be right back. John scurried into the back room and I bit my lip. Did I do the wrong thing? Some of the other actors watched as I crossed to and sat down in a corner of the room. When I looked at them, they looked away. As if this whole situation wasn't bad enough. Finally, John returned, solemnly carrying a pile of bunched fabric in his fans. In his hands! It looked kind of familiar. He came up to me, then gently set it on my lap. I ran my hands across it, smoothing it out. It was thick and heavy, purple and beige. Beige! I straightened it, and folds of a dress spilled to the floor. Juliet? Do you mind taking over? But, but John, I'm not an actress. I know I know the lines from trying to teach them to Jacques this whole past month. I heard you while you were practicing. You were trying to teach him the emotion, not just the words. And the thing is, you were good. Not great, of course, but good. You make a fantastic tree, but I think you'd make an even better Juliet. And if I hadn't been so stubborn, I would have seen this sooner. John, I don't know. I'm really not the acting type. I have really bad stage fright. I'm just not sure. Even if you don't think you could do it for yourself, couldn't you do it for me? My hands shook as I held the dress up, trying to imagine it on myself. There was no way this was going to go well. There was no way. But then, it wasn't as if the play could get any worse. I wanted to take some of the strain off John. Even if this meant that the play completely bombed, at least we could face the devastation together. For once, John was truly relying on me. If it's for you, I think I can try. John immediately pulled me into a bear hug, crushing my arms against my ribs, then just as quickly pulled away. Go get changed, hurry! I'll stall for as long as I can. But... Go! John pushed me toward the dressing room, then rushed into the wings. I sprinted into the back room. The costume stood there, sheer glee on her face. The costumer, sorry. I always hoped this costume would see the light of day. She stripped me down, practically demolishing my tree, costume in her rush. I can fix it later, and pulled Juliet's dress over my head. Hana, you completely transformed! She placed Juliet's hat on my head, and as she did, I peered into the mirror. Ah, uh... she looks so cute! The costumer smacked me on the back, jolting me to my senses. I had to hurry. I ran into the wings, trying to peer on stage. John was wandering the front, bemoaning the loss of his fair Juliet, certain members of the audience mumbling under their breath. Where was I supposed to enter from? I glanced around, utterly confused. Oh, whoa, well, if only my fair maiden would grace me with her fairest of presences. Shit, I needed to get out there. Nothing for it. Ah! <laughs> I emerged as gracefully as I could, head bowed under the harsh lights. John turned, shocked, but immediately covered his expression. My most fairest of maidens, hark. Oh, fair... How habit thee found it thine self upon this balcony of mine desire? I flushed. Now was I supposed to improv? In Shakespearean? M my heart of hearts, my love of loves, not but mine horrid folk have trappeth to me here. That worked, right? Where exactly in the plot were we? Mine love, I rushed over here as soon as I had received thine hasty message. Thine sweet Romeo, star of thine heavens, and you, the refreshed hope of mine heart. I shall rescue you, and we shall it then flee and frolic as none ever have. John lifted his arms to me. I stared at him. He didn't mean for me to jump, right? Surely he was joking. But John made a face at me and flicked his fingers towards him. I swallowed. F for thee, my love, for thee I overcome. With a deep breath, I climbed to the edge of the balcony. Then, eyes closed, I jumped. I collapsed right on top of him and John fell to the floor. Hearing John grunt, I rolled off and away from him, ending up against a fake bush and knocking it down. I wheezed, desperately trying to catch my breath as John crawled over to me. Hannah, are you okay? Oh, uh... Hannah, th the play. Oh, uh, how oft when men are at the point of death have they been merry, which their keepers call a lightning before death. Oh, how I may call this a lightning. Oh, my love, my wife, death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath, hath had no power upon yet upon thy beauty. John immediately launched into Romeo's Death of Juliet speech, and I closed my eyes, doing the best impersonation of a dead person that I could muster. It wasn't hard, given the circumstances. And lips, O oh you, the doors of breath seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. John turned toward me, eyes lit with determination. Oh no, I forgot all about this part. He placed his arms on either side of me, his face coming closer and closer. My heart beat rapidly as I tried my hardest not to scrunch up my face. 
My first kiss. John cupped his hands around my chin, then placed his thumbs over my mouth. He kissed the tips of his thumb ever so tenderly. <laughs> oh my God. Then pulled away all the sorrow of a grieving man in his eyes. Thus, with a kiss, I die. John collapsed next to me, hand in mine. Act, the actors playing our families rushed out on stage. John and I giggled quietly. That went well. Better than expected. You were right, Hannah. The human Juliet was a million times better. Not at least all... Uh, not least of all, because I think I finally understood how Romeo felt about her. I mean, you almost killed me. <laughs> Just kidding. John grinned and nudged me in the ribs. Shh. In the end, the play was a success. Well, comparatively. People praised the action-packed twist at the end, seeing the entire play as a strange avant-garde performance. Juliet was a bird because she was treated as subhuman until she was finally able to exercise her free will, or something. Under this RC pretense, we were given the benefit of the doubt and allowed to continue with the play. People complimented me on a job well done, though they didn't necessarily mean my performance. A few people did say my death was pretty convincing, though. As we hung up our costumes, John and I joked to ourselves about the new Jacques' mysterious disappearance. <laughs> I think he flew to the Bahamas. Or maybe he returned to that creepy shopkeeper. I'm just glad he's out of our lives now. He was nothing but trouble. Are you sure he's not hurt, though? Are you kidding me? That bird's even more stubborn than I am. He's got a survival instinct surpassing the fiercest line of the savannah. He'll be fine. Honestly, it was better that he was gone. He'd be happier that way. John said that I would play Juliet from now on and we could practice whenever we liked, although I wasn't too keen on that idea. Overall, as we headed to our dorms to practice like crazy before the tournament, I was happier than I'd been in a long, long time. Maybe there was something to this acting thing after all. <laughs>